How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern with Brian Alvarez. Saturdays with Jim Valley at 1 p.m. Eastern. And Sundays with me. I'm knocking things over here. Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. The big game is today. As this is going on. <laughs> at the start of the show. <laughs> big turnout here today for Wrestling Observer Live, I'm assuming. Listen, we're here on Sports Byline. There's nothing better for me. I'm not that big of a football guy. I watch it. Obviously, I'm going to be watching it later when I wrap up here. But it's not my thing. And that's cool. That's fine. Wrestling is my thing. Basketball is my thing. Baseball is my thing for sure. A lot to talk about here today on the show. Roman Reigns versus Cody Assef for WrestleMania. For now, we'll see where this goes after the wild press conference on Thursday. It was cool to see... How many non-in-the-know wrestling fans or casual fans reached out to me to ask me if this was real? I thought that was the coolest part of this. That so many people were very invested into thinking this is, wow, they're going off script here. Nice when you fool the audience. That's what they want. We're going to talk about that and where that's headed. Tony Khan made his big announcement for an event on March 13th at the TD Garden in Boston called Big Business in Boston. Here it is. We'll find out what happens now. Is Mercedes going to change that division? What does she mean to wrestling? What does she mean to that company? We're going to find that out. I want to I have some stuff I want to add to that. Also highlights from SmackDown, Collision, and also Will Ospreay's last day for now. In New Japan. All this and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Guys, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter. At Andrew Zarian. Also, I do a bunch of other stuff. Matt Men Podcast. 12 years running. It is a wacky, wacky show. It's a pro wrestling show. But it's like pro wrestling adjacent. It's a lot of buzz- it, it, we We go off the rails. It's like 50-50. Wrestling half the show. My producer, MG and John, they have the worst time producing that show because it's so off the wall and they got to guide me back in. I also do a show here on Wrestling Observer with Garrett Gonzalez every Tuesday called We're Live Pal. You can check that out and everything else I'm doing. It's all on Twitter. Let's talk about this WrestleMania main event. By the way, uh, I see people are asking me as I'm doing the show, is your studio complete? No, it's not. This is nowhere near complete. It's going to be completed Probably by Tuesday. Parts are still coming in. You know, I, I don't know anybody else's experiences. It's like a disaster with Amazon. Deliveries change. Everything changes. I don't know what's going on here. Let's talk about wrestling. Roman Reigns, Cody, set for WrestleMania 40 for now. For now. You know, they, they pivoted here. And everybody that I've spoken to at WWE over the last week or last couple of days since this happened has said... God, this has been in the cards. It's a bigger story. Just let it play out. You know, I got to tell you, from last Friday, not this Friday that passed, but the previous Friday where Cody came out and essentially gave the blessing for Dwayne to be in the main event, to Thursday, boy, a lot changed. Right, Matt? Oh, uh, it was it was quite daunting. They they pivoted definitely. <clears throat> So uh, whether or not that was like part of the original concept that didn't kind of make sense to a lot of people or they pivoted, this was interesting to see. I saw a lot of positivity about this. I saw a lot of criticism about this. But essentially what they did, they announced a press conference in Las Vegas Super Bowl week at T-Mobile Arena. You know, if I were to describe what WWE would love to do, in Vegas, it was this, a stage show. They put on a, a, a show that was essentially about the company having a press conference in that building. I know they anticipate a lot more people. There were about 2,500 people in that building. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of hard. I, I, you know, this was a bizarre test for them, that I, and I don't think it worked the way that they had wanted to when it came to how many people came to the building, but... It looked great. Whatever, th- whatever their goal was, this visually was pretty cool. So what happened? Uh, Cody was interrupted. 
and the face of face between the rock and Rome, uh, between the face of face between rock and Roman. I'm sorry. Let me read that again. Uh, I, I, my brain just stopped. Cody interrupted the face to face between rock and Roman, uh, which was a strange, uh, face to face because essentially they put out the, the, the lineage, the family tree of the Anoa family, right? And on the top of it, essentially was Dwayne as like the head of the table on that thing, uh, which I found to be interesting. And they said they're bonded by blood. They did the, um, they did the, the, the predator pushing too many pencils handshake. <laughs> and Cody comes out. And Cody starts cutting a promo on uh, on Roman. And Roman says something about his dad. And Cody essentially says, you know, if your, your great whatever was here, he would be ashamed of you. Both and of you, he said. Uh, both of you. To- or, or did he say both of you or, or ashamed yeah, of you? And something like that. And right then is when you realize, oh, there's they, this is where it changed. And this is where it Roman changes. Versus Rock to um, Cody being or them being together on the same page. So Cody, uh, Dwayne essentially gets involved. He's like, listen, you're talking about my family. Now this is personally slaps the crap out of Cody. Melee happens. Uh, Seth's involved. And now I'm thinking, oh, man, I hope this is not a tag. It looks like it's a tag. (laughs) But how is it going to – I mean, okay. So what are you going to have everybody work two nights? Yep. You're going to have Seth work two nights? You're going to have – why would Seth even want to do that if he has to defend his title? There is a match at Elimination Chamber to determine who's facing Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. Seth's going to say, like, oh, yeah, you know what? Let's make my life a little bit more difficult. I just blew out my knee or whatever he tore. I'm going to wrestle twice. Partial ACL, I think. Partial ACL. Uh, I, I, you, I'm going to let it play out because I contact, you know, every time I ask me, like, just let it play. Let it play. So the Rock slaps him. Uh, this is per Dave Meltzer. The plan looks to be a tag match night one and the title match is night two. Why? Why would anybody want to agree to that? Why would Cody in his right mind want to wrestle twice? Why would anybody want to wrestle twice? It's the most prized possession in the, in the industry. You're going to go out there twice? I, I mean, listen, I'm adding logic to wrestling, and that's very difficult sometimes. <laughs> that's your first mistake. <laughs> that's my first mistake. But The Rock is obviously a heel here. Uh, earlier in the day, Rock went on Pat McAfee's show and called the Cody fans crybaby. And he's a heel for sure. There was also 1997. uh, And you know what? I liked it. it. That was, and you know, (laughs) I've been very critical of Dwayne's promos, you know, because he comes out there and it's still 1999 for him and the crowd eats it up, but it's not the same. He changed it up. He added a level of reality to this, his backstage confrontation. And that's what people reached me out, uh, reached out to me about backstage hunters being interviewed. Here comes Dwayne swearing up a storm, gets in his face. And it was I'm like, clearly oh. off script. It, it was, and it felt real. It, it felt, it felt like nobody wrote it. They said, hey, just go out there and have that interaction. And, you know, Rock was going in and out a little bit of, uh, with his words. You know, he kind of flubbed some of the words, which is great. It adds more to it. And Hunter, Hunter too, you know, it was very off the cup work for me. And it worked for a lot of other people because that went viral. I think something like 200 million people have seen parts of this press conference on social media worldwide. That is an astronomical number. To put it to perspective, Lisa Ann's arrest video got about 40 million. (laughs) (laughs) That was a big story this week, too, on social. So I got to say, I'm... I'm intrigued by the sense of reality here. I'm intrigued that Hunter now is somewhat of the face of authority in this company. SmackDown, when we talk about it after the break, and also we got to talk about New Japan and everything else that's happening, AEW. um, They are really, this is a very different booking process for WWE. This is obviously a McMahon-less process. And I'm very intrigued to see where it goes. 
I don't want to see the tag match. I don't know. I, and, and that's fine. That's my opinion. That's my, that's my personal preference. You might change as we get closer. I might, and I probably will. I probably will. But as of today, Super Bowl Sunday, big game Sunday, I, I don't understand why. If it's a compromise, it's not a good compromise. If it's in the plans and they're working something unique here, I'm all for it. CM Punk and Big E were also on commentary, which I absolutely loved. There was a moment where Punk was saying how he would punch someone in the face if they slapped them like that. That's and so Dwayne, from a million miles away, is just staring at him. It was, you know, they alluded to it. Is that a possibility? Is that match a reality? Sure is. A lot of people were also thinking Hunter's returning for a match. That man has a pacemaker. I don't think it would be well advised by anybody, including himself, where he has said he's never going to wrestle again. So a lot of moving parts here. You also have Becky Lynch confront Rhea Ripley. Uh, they set up elimination stuff. They also announced a new digital series on X called WWE Speed. That was a concept that they tested last fall. All right, things are moving in the right place. When we come back, we're going to talk about SmackDown and the setup there for the following week and AEW, Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. When we left off before our break, we're going into SmackDown. You know, the story here was setting up for next week more than anything else. But again, a very... You could see who Hunter's favorites are. <laughs> it's very obvious by the show. This is NX fifteen NXT. NXT. <laughs> it really it's 2015-2016 NXT. That's where we're at, and that's fine. Uh, that was fantastic wrestling. Triple H comes out, big entrance. He addressed the press conference. He essentially said there are people in 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 this company that uh, don't know their role and they think they're in charge, alluding to Dwayne using his influence as someone that sits on the board of directive directors, the board of directives. That sounds like a draconian, terrible future state. The board of directives has called you in. Um, you know, he, he, he obviously took a shot at the rock. They also announced qualifying matches for Elimination Chamber where the winner, winner will get to face Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. Uh, this set up that Hunter is the babyface here and Dwayne and the Bloodline are the heels. Okay. Let's see where it goes. You got Bianca Belair defeating Mitchin to qualify for the Elimination Chamber. Bailey came out, explained why she challenged EO at WrestleMania. Dakota Kai came out. And uh, Bailey asked her where she stood because for all these months, she's kind of hung out and hasn't done a thing, hasn't said a word. And she said, listen, I was put in a bad place here. Oh, what the hell did you want me to do? Eos comes out. And they essentially go to attack Bailey. Dakota Kai gets out of the ring, grabs a chair. And starts swinging it to everybody, but doesn't really. I found that odd. I found that a little. Weird. It could be a setup where she turns on her for yeah. sure. It can make you think mm -hmm. that. I was okay with that too. Here's something cool: Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne match was awesome. <laughs> against DIY Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. This was uh, every bit of NXT in its glory years. You got two of the best. British wrestlers, UK-based wrestlers, against the indie darlings of the 2010s. The, this was a fantastic, fantastic match. They gave it about eight and a half minutes. Uh, I, I love this. And, you know, it just shows you when, you when you strike when the iron is hot, right? What would it mean if these guys got to go out there in their peak of 2016, 17, when everybody, when it was buzzing? that these are the future of this company, if they went out on SmackDown and they had the opportunity to put on these matches then, how would that have advanced their careers? You know, both Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, they've cooled down. Same thing with Pete Dunne. Actually, Pete Dunne has been all over the place, but Tyler Bate for sure. 
It's not the same Tyler well, Bate, but now this well, is a rehab. Was, the big part was getting rid of the Butch moniker and going back to what we know and what we all fall in love with when they when those two had that five star match back in um, NXT uh, for the UK title. I mean, that's where that's to me. Yeah, getting that, getting back to that, and getting him back in that spot, and now. I, I I don't like the joint manipulation stuff they do with him as much, but I get it. You know, they did a segment with. Uh, did you uh, not like it deadly. back then? Did you not like it a decade ago? Well, it it was different back then. It was it was it was it made sense in the moment of the match. Sure. Now they do it to do it. It, yeah. it reminds me of back back when WCW when Booker T used to do the. Uh, Spin a Rooney, and it was actually part of the match. Don't you dare! Up don't you in. dare talk badly no. about the Spin a Rooney. We're turning off your I mic. Just... We can't. We can't. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Main event: Randy Orton defeated <laughs> Sami Zayn to qualify for the Elimination Chamber. So that is your first qualifier there. All right, cool. Let's talk about dynamite big... here. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, real quick, they, yeah. they made a big, uh, big stink at the beginning about. Uh, having doing the elimination chamber chamber qualifiers they put a graphic up and everything i thought they did that very well yeah but okay um, before we go into dynamite because i want to i want to touch yep. on this a little bit obviously they are shifting their plans here who should face seth at wrestlemania if it's not cody i think it's gonna be drew don't you is it Drew? Okay, so does Drew win that title? Uh, when a uh, night two? I, I mean, again, again, two. we're going with the we're going with again. the assumption. We're going with the assumption that they're going to do a tag match, which I don't. Again, I don't want to see that. It's going to hurt night two. Unless, listen, they have some very creative booking here that they that they change and they, everything changes. I, I don't know. They could do. They could. This version of WWE will be very unpredictable for a lot of us. The ones that have followed this and they know the pattern of how they book. Yep. You know, some of this also affects AEW because when we go, when we look at wrestling as, as people, listen, I, I, I grown up in New York, it was WWF for majority of my life. And that company has not strayed away from their booking philosophy for the last 40 plus years. The same types, it, it just recycled. We're now entering, obviously you modify, you pivot with the times, but the the predictability has always been there. Now, I don't know where they're going, unless I know creatively I'm told something. You know, sometimes I, I, I it veers off totally from where I want it, and that's great. That's an element of surprise, and we want to see that. Speculation is fun when you do that, but I don't want to see a two-night thing. Where you have a tag match, and then the same people are wrestling the same, the next day, and then what are you going to do? You're going to have the excuse of like, well, of course they lost because they wrestled twice. Drew's going to wrestle once, but Seth's going to wrestle twice. I don't know, but I do love this new Drew McIntyre. Oh, he's great. <laughs> Listen, man, sometimes... He's better when, as a heel, isn't he? You way like him better. better as a heel or a baby face. I, whatever too. this is. Mm -hmm. I, I always liked him better as a heel. He was always a really strong heel. But this version of him where, like, he's not really... He's just being honest. Yep. And that makes the best the best characters, right? The ones that, that makes are, the best can, character. Like, can, is he a yep. heel for disliking CM reality. Punk? I don't think so mm -hmm. because his story is pretty ca uh, captivating. When I needed your help, when I was, when you talk about being a locker room leader and you talk about being there for the young guys, when I was the young guy back in 2011 or whatever it was, I needed help. It was the dark time for him and Punk was nowhere to help him. And now he's coming back to take his spot and, you know, he, he's telling a really good story that, that I can't look at him and be like, oh yeah, you're a heel. Same thing with the world title positioning. Uh, is he really a heel? He's just being honest. I like it. I I hope that, you know, we see more of this. Maybe this is when, when things get disrupted, like CM Punk is a disruptor to to every level. Positive. I'm 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 saying that in a morally more in a morally more in a positive way. 
He's a disruptor. And what it does, it kind of motivates people to get a little bit nervous about their positioning. Everybody knows what a draw he is financially. AEW knows, WWE knows. So it kind of gets you a little nervous when it comes to where you want to be positioned, especially with Drew in a contract year with the option of maybe leaving. He's going to put on the best performance he can because he wants to make the most money. Even if he leaves, he benefits from this because he is a hotter act and could demand more. Man, I, I, I hope Punk's recovery goes very quickly because, once again, we're missing out on these very unique matches. This man only had three matches. Two on house shows, I believe, right? It was New York and L.A. And then Royal, and Royal Rumble. Rumble. And he got hurt in the safest match. <laughs> I, I Listen, I, I feel bad for him. It's very, he's 40-something years old. I know a lot of those guys that do BJJ and they roll around like that and they all suffer from these same tears at that age. It, it's not easy. His body's broken down. The style of wrestling he did in IWA Mid-South and Ring of Honor and everything else that he did on the indies has caught up. Also, almost 10 years, 7 years he was gone. Did not wrestle. Your body changes. Listen, I'm 40 years old. Do you know what I'm suffering with today? I have gout. And I'm I'm in shape. I'm fit. I have abs. I could do the Hogan peck shake. I'm suffering. I'm old. It's happening. I'm broken down. Everything hurts. And I've never been dropped on my head like these guys. Excuse me? At least I have my hair. Thank God for modern medicine. I'll tell you that. Thank God for Propecia. Saved my life. Spencer Coben, the bald truth. Changed my life. Saved my hair. There's a couple of the wrestlers that could also do something about it. I, I think this is a this is a very unique setup that we have here that we're going into. Listen, I yeah. I You know what's funny? I, I have a producer in my ear here, a little behind the scenes. And whenever I'm getting a cue, he says it in a very serious way. But sometimes when John gets in my ear to talk on the air. It's more very, like, it's a whole different voice. He just gave me a cue, and I have no idea if that was on the air or off the air. So I responded to him. You got a random yeah here. When we come back from our break, I want to dive deep into AEW. We're going to spend some time on this because this is a pivotal moment for this company. This year is a pivotal year. A lot of changes happening. And I want to break that down with this Boston show. <laughs> Things are changing. When we come back, we're going to deep dive into all of this. And maybe I'm going to hint at something here. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. <laughs> Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. You know, <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Off the air, you know, I'm asking my producer. I'm like, what can they hear when you're talking? And he's like, oh, none of it. I'm like, since when? He goes, since forever. Not Matt, because you guys could hear Matt. John, my other producer. Nobody could hear him. I've been talking to this man for three years. Have you guys thought either I'm losing it or I'm having a full conversation with nobody, this imaginary character I've made up or, <laughs> or, or is it like, oh yeah, they just didn't pot him up or whatever. You know, <laughs> I just discovered this. It's been three years. I've been doing the show. Not a clue. <laughs> I've had no clue at this. Let's talk about this. By the way, Super Bowl starting in a few minutes here. Reba singing. Reba. <laughs> A single Reba mom who singing. works too hard, who loves his loves her kids but never stops. <laughs> what a great show Reba was. Love that show. What a good mom, Reba McIntyre. Uh, Tony Khan's big announcement. Let's go into AEW. AEW Big Business will take place March 13th at TD Garden in Boston, as I had reported for months. And I got the most high level of threat i've ever received in my life i had i got i'm not even i, I sh i'm making this somewhat into a joke but i shouldn't i got multiple death threats people sent me my address uh i've never seen such insanity it's almost like i would say the amount of hatred i got 
would be equivalent to if I went on the air and I defended Vince McMahon. That's the level of vitriol that existed. Because I was told she was going to AEW and I was very certain of it and that it was happening soon. Those are my words. Crazy. Very passionate fan base. What does that mean for AEW? I have no idea. Because now, all of a sudden, the same people that were so upset over this news are meh. Radio silent, pretty much. Radio silent. It's shocking. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. This obviously this is the anticipated debut of Mercedes Monet. They didn't try to hide it one bit, but they didn't announce it. Very similar to CM Punk. Right now, according to WrestleTix, they have sold, I believe, or distributed uh somewhere around over 5,000 tickets. Friday was pre-release for the show. Yesterday was the actual release uh, of tickets for the general public. I'm trying to find his post here from yesterday. Do you have it by any chance? I'm looking for it. Give me one second. I had it here in front of me. Oh, here we go. We got it. 13 hours ago. This is as of 16 hours ago. Distributed 5,600 tickets. The current setup is 6,800. Available tickets are 1,230. The last time they were here, there's 32 days till the show. Last time they were here was Blood and Guts on 7 1923. 8,956 in the building. Strong start. They'll be around 8,000. I think they'll sell more. Yeah. They'll sell more once they get on the other side of Revolution and they start really pushing that show. We yeah. start getting a card for that show. I think they'll I think they'll get the other. No, they, 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 they'll be fine. Uh, they'll be okay yep. here. Um, you know, they got to sell an average of like 130 tickets a day to get to 10,000. I don't know if they'll get to 10,000, but, you know, bigger number than usual. If they get over 8,900, that's great. If they get in that same vicinity, that's also great. This is a company that has been struggling with ticket sales. Not great. Things for WWE, I mean, listen, you, you look at their shows also. They're doing... For TV, regularly over 10,000 people. Somehow shows are less. Some are set up for 5,400. Some are set up for 7,000. I'm just going through the list here. SmackDown uh, on March 22nd is probably going to be over 8,000 people for them. AW Dynamite on the 28th. Here you go. Collision. It's a collision. Dynamite slash collision. Here's it doing a double taping. 1,900 tickets. I, I'm not as concerned about that. I, I think once they get a little bit hotter, they'll do better. You know, but they want to be around that four to five to six, 7,000 range, really. That's really healthy business. But Tony announced, came out and did the announcement. There's also the Okada story kind of hanging for them. I don't know where he goes. A lot of people are curious about this, but I, I really don't have, um, don't know. AW Collision last night, fun show. Blackpool Combat Club, John Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli defeated Esfing. I found out that means Sphinx. And Star Jr. The CMLL thing is continuing here where they're just being brutalized by the Blackpool Combat Club. You know, I, I think this is obviously, this is going to add another element to Forbidden Door. A lot of criticism about the the lucha aspect to the show, uh, to to AEW now, and and I was thinking, I'm like, you know, it's interesting, right? The perception of things are interesting because WCW from 1995, 1996, 1997 was so heavy on the luchadors for their mid range matches, you know, their mid card. I love that first hour of WCW every, it was, every time. It was so it was, it was so fun. Awesome. And I love that stuff because guess why? I love wrestling. I love different aspects of wrestling. Seeing the lucha aspect incorporated with someone like John Moxley which does not wrestle that style at all is interesting to me. Seeing all the different styles. I like wacky matches. I like wacky combinations because I like wrestling. I understand there's a sports entertainment element to this and you want a story, fine. 
But for me, these are the things that I've always desired in wrestling to see this. That 1996 Nitro, I could watch all of those. Back to back. Because you would see some pairings that you never thought you would see. And very high quality level matches. So I I'm fine with having those. The whole, whole show's not revolving around it. You have one match, two matches, and that's fine. Daniel Garcia defeated Shane Taylor. I don't like Shane Taylor's outfit. He needs a new outfit for being on national TV. <laughs> I, was in my, I was in our uh, boys chat yesterday with uh, some key people that are <laughs> very involved in wrestling. And Matt's in there, too, our producer. John's in there, too. And I was going off about his pants. Too shiny. Blinding me. Mm -hmm. Recap of the Young Bucks attack on Sting and Darby. After they won the, t the titles on Dynamite. Eddie Kingston challenged Brian Danielson to a match of revolution. If he wins, Danielson will shake his hand. I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. I didn't mean to, didn't mean to uh, uh, interrupt you, but Please. real quick, what do you think of the Young Bucks, um, the new, this new persona they have? Matthew. This, Matthew and Nicholas. Matthew and Nicholas <laughs> the Jackson. Jackson. The Jackson boys? <laughs> I mean, they're not so much Young Bucks. The Jackson no, men? no. I don't know what you're gonna. I don't know if they keep because I they they went through that whole rigmarole the other day on on a rampage and then they announced them as the Young Bucks and I'm like the Young Bucks doesn't make sense anymore to me. Yeah, but, I got I got a great I, I got a great gimmick. You know, I love the bonk on the head gimmick, right? That's my answer oh, yeah. to all all <laughs> problems with stories and wrestling. I'm like, just get hit in the head and get a new persona. <laughs> they're gonna come out. They're gonna get hit in the head in this match, and they're gonna become the Jackson Two, where they're gonna think. <laughs> that they're Motown singers. Oh no. In that outfit, in the in their in their with the Goopa lean on and everything. It's <laughs> gonna come out of but I think Tony I think Tony could get the rights to some of those songs by the Jackson Five. They come out and do ABC, <laughs> I'll be there. All of them. Oh no. <laughs> no? You guys hate that idea? No. You guys know nothing about know. wrestling. <laughs> Brian Cage uh, with Prince Nana versus the Outrunners, Turbo Floyd and oh, Truth Magnum. Eddie Kingston. What? Oh, Eddie you're Kingston. Yeah. Eddie so Kingston. he uh, challenged. You know, he challenged Danielson to a match, a Revolution, which is going to be a great match. Uh, and if he wins, Danielson must shake his hand. Great. Undisputed Kingdom and Ishii in a segment backstage. It was pretty much uh, Roddy Strong saying, "Like, hey, listen, if you win that title, I'm coming after you." Adam Copeland interview. He comes out there. Daniel Garcia comes out. And now they set up a match between the two. All right. It's going to be good. Listen, That's going to be really I, good, actually. I'm going to say something here, okay? Maybe it's a little unpopular. I think a, a small aspect of the problem AEW has is that they have so many great established legends in that company that don't give a crap about being the main guy. So they want to work you know with the right. younger talent and they want to put over that. the younger, younger talent. They want to make them look good. Listen, I understand. I think you should do that to some extent. But you also need to prop these guys up as key players like Danielson, uh, you know, Edge, Adam Copeland. You know, when Punk was there. I think Punk was more in the mix. But like even Omega, you know, but the Bucks, these guys need to be. The face of this company. They're the established guys that people went to AEW for. They started tuning into AEW for. Well, remember, this started with Cody uh, saying, hey, um, I'm not, I'm never going to go. Uh, which was a huge, huge title. mistake. Which was huge, mistake. huge mistake. Missed opportunity for that company because now we see where he is and how hot he is and how likable he is. Just something to think about. Brody King. Monstrous. Defeated Mark Briscoe after King and Julius spiked Mark Briscoe. Diana Perazzo. Diana Perazzo. Pazuzio. <laughs> uh, from Central Jersey. Diane Pazuzio. Uh, defeated Kiara Hogan. Tony Storm defeated Queen Aminata. An AEW international title match. Orange Cassidy defeated Tomohiro Ishii to retain after the match. The Undisputed Kingdom came out and attacked Orange Cassidy. Ishii is fantastic. That was a such a good match. I I I love I've I love him for he was one of the first guys that really really got caught my eye in New Japan. In that in really that era. That guy. Yeah. yeah. He's fantastic. Yeah. You Just know, part of the, the part of the issue wrestles. here. 
Part of yeah. the issue here is that we have so much New Japan integration on this TV. Same with CMLL, right? So like now, when you do Forbidden Door, does it mean as much? And I think it will. Not as forbidden. I don't well, know. He's I, I think do they... different combinations, right? He's, he's doing just very different do... combos. Yeah, you're gonna have to find matches yeah. we haven't seen. Yeah, and I know a little something about that show. I'm very excited for it. I'm curious where it will end up. I'm very curious because they have a pretty cool opportunity here to do something with this. You know, with the CMLL connection. Who do you integrate? Maybe Okada. Maybe Okada faces. I don't know. <laughs> Mystico. Maybe that could be a match. Very interesting stuff here. But listen, we'll see. AEW, this is a great opportunity for them the next couple of weeks to do something. Next week on Dynamite, you're going to get uh, Young Bucks versus Top Flight, Adam Copeland versus Daniel Garcia, Sky Blue Willow. You'll hear from Hangman Page, Samoa Joe, Swerve Strickland, Tony Storm's latest film premiere, Wet Ink. Very cool stuff. When we come back, we're going to wrap up the show. I want to touch on Will Ospreay for a few minutes. This was it for him in New Japan. He's done. Also, Okada, final days, right? He's approaching the end, end of the month. A lot of interesting things here. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, final few minutes of the show here on Sports Byline. New Japan, new beginning in Osaka. Wrapped up early in the morning for me. Okada defeated Tana, uh, Tanahashi, Tanahashi. I don't know why. I, I, my brain just stopped at his name. This is his final couple of matches in that company. You also got War Dogs. Bullet Club War Dogs. Against United Empire in a fantastic main. Fantastic, fantastic main. Ending... Will Ospreay's full-time commitment to New Japan. He's headed to AEW now. This is going to be another key element to that arsenal of that top-tier roster that company has. You got to put him right at the top, right? You got to put him right at the top. Yeah. Yeah. You got to put him right at the top. You know, I, I feel like they made the mistake with Jay White. They made that mistake with him. I hope they don't do that again because Jay's fantastic and it's a little bit of a slow burn with him, but you got to shake things up on that top tier. Just like how you put Swerve in that position and you made it work, you have to have the same investment in these guys too. You got to have a new generation of that top tier because that other guy, those other guys that you built the company on are falling apart. And, and I say that respectfully. These guys have worked very hard to get to where they are and their bodies are breaking down again. You have to use these guys. Build it around MJF. Do something when he comes back. Next week when we come back, we're going to have a whole lot more to talk about on the show. Studio will be done by then. We'll kind of understand where this main event for WrestleMania is headed. And a whole lot more. Guys, this was a blast. I had a great time with you. Let's do it again next week on Wrestling Observer Live. See you all next time.